When Steel Talks, everybody listens. This is When Steel Talks. We're pleased to have the opportunity to sit down and welcome to our interview stage here at When Steel Talks, Mr. Kendall Williams, who is a staple on the New York pan scene. And of course, you have arranged for Crossfire Steel Orchestra for the past 2013 uh, panorama season. You've also worked um, with NYU, but we didn't touch on that you know, within uh, the time that we have together. First of all, welcome. Thank you for taking time out and we know it's a busy schedule for you. And uh, welcome. Thank you. Okay, so let's get started about who Kendall Williams is. Um, we understand that both your parents played Pan. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your genesis, your intro into Steve Pan, the art form. Mm -hmm. um, well, my father, he played tenor, my mother played six bass. What um, orchestra? In Miami with uh, it was Miami South Stars at the time, and it turned into Miami Pan Symphony. There was a break off for 21st century, and so I was just around the Pan community and around them a whole lot. Okay. So, what is it about Pan that attracted to you? My father playing. It was, there was notes, it was music. I couldn't sit still. I was busy. <laughs> I was young. <laughs> I wanted to play what he was playing. Okay. Um, what were your years like at Florida Memorial University with Dr. Dawn Batson, where you did your bachelor's? Talk about that. Oh. And maybe you want to talk about the time leading up to it, because mm -hmm. of course there's a period of time in between when you were attracted and introduced to it via your parents' pan playing and involvement in the art form, mm -hmm. to when you eventually went to Florida Memorial University. Mm -hmm. Well, we played with 21st Century Steel Band in Miami for mm -hmm. like a number of years. So you guys were initially Miami based? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, 21st Century performed a few times at Florida Memorial Steel Band, which is how I was made aware of you know, the Steel Band's existence. Um, I met with Dr. B a few times, and she actually knew my parents for years before, so I, you know, I had no idea. Um, but I met with her, and she was nice, she was sweet, and she encouraged me to come. And I was a little bit uh, back and forth about the whole music scene. I was actually into architecture a lot before. Oh. Yeah. So um, I switched over. <laughs> <laughs> what a switch. <laughs> I switched over to music, and I decided if I was going to do music, it had to be in Pan, and I had to go there. And okay. that's, that's how I ended up at Florida Memorial University. Well, let's backpedal just a little bit and talk about mm -hmm. architecture. Is there anything <laughs> in that realm that still attracts you? Is there any room for it in your life right now? Uh, room for it? <laughs> Not exactly, but I still do very much love architecture. I love to design uh, houses and buildings. And, yeah. Okay, you can design mine one day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you think about Dr. Dawn Batson? What is it about this immensely talented, beautiful, you know, very Afrocentric lady that brings out the greatness in so many musicians, steel pan musicians especially, such as yourself. I mean, talk about your experiences with her at Florida Memorial University. Dr. Batson, she, she pushes you and she makes you find a way without making you find a way. She asks you to do something and then she leaves. And that's it. <laughs> and the, the, the pressure of her leaving is enough to make you find that way because she's gone and she's not gonna tell you anything else. That's but it. she gave you the tools before <laughs> she makes you understand now you're capable of mm -hmm. for yourself. Yeah. And she's done it many times and we've just been expected to rise to the occasion. She would tell me, Hey, you have to make this work and and you have all these notes to play, figure out a way and I'm like, <laughs> Okay, do I connect two pan sticks together to reach and she's like you can do that <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that, that's it that's Dr. B. Wow what was your experience in terms of playing like before you got to Flor uh, Florida Memorial? Um, it was it was interesting it, it was it was fun it, there was no pressure mm. You know, I think that was the biggest thing that there was no pressure absolutely no pressure and then I got to Florida Memorial and I was surrounded with people um, on my playing field, people higher, people lower, um, but there was constant, um, I don't want to say competition, but there was, we were Challenges, just pushing. Challenges, yeah. so therefore you could push each other exactly. to simply you know, rise above you in your own previously yeah. thought of potential. Because mm -hmm. yeah. when I got there, Leroy Simmons was there, yeah. Kareem Thompson was mm -hmm. still there, um, Iman was there. So, you know, these people, they, we were pushing each other, you know? You see them playing something, you're like, yeah, you know, I can do that too, so let me do it, you know? Yeah. 
good. Okay, next, your step was to NYU, New York University, mm -hmm. and of course you achieved your master's that you had to graduate recital last year, I think it was mm -hmm. May. Yeah. Uh, talk about that experience as well, and if you like, compare it to uh, the previous educational ground, which was FMU. Um, and NYU was very much different. <laughs> um, NYU, we practiced maybe once a week, um, for the most part, um, at Florida Memorial, we practiced every day, and and sometimes for hours after, you know, rehearsal time. That's just something that we wanted to do. So it, it was a, a huge culture shock and a huge difference. You know, culture shock. <laughs> okay. It was, it was being up here, you know, playing once. It it wasn't enough for me. You know, it was, oh. yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I didn't have my fix. <laughs> okay. I didn't, I didn't have my fix at all. Um, but the the playing style was very different up here. Um, and you know we were all about reading music and because you graduated with your master's in music theory. Mm, yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, so. so it was it was it very was different. It's yet another uh, <laughs> point mm -hmm. in your evolution in terms yeah. of becoming a, a, a what I should say a pan artist or mm -hmm. a composer. All right. Mm. Describe your compositions today, because not only are you a performing artist and arranger, you're also a composer. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Composing, composing is still sort of new for me. Um, I'm still trying to find my, my thing in composing. Um, what I try to do most with composing is to include pan in everything that I do, um, even if it's for orchestra. So everything relates back to pan in some mm -hmm. sort of way. So it is your primary instrument of yeah. choice. So that's mm -hmm. just that and that, that's just how I that's how I feel my music. That's how I feel my music through pan. Who are your musical influences? And of course, this does not necessarily have a restriction to pan, but any genre, any epoch, any kind. Um, I would, I would have to start by first saying the arrangers. So Bugsy, um, hearing him, hearing Bradley, hearing Jit, Robbie. Um, those started off as yeah, Those yeah. started off as my main uh, pelham. I started off as my main musical influences, and as I started to learn more about music, I started to get into Tchaikovsky, um, Charlie Parker, um, some jazz, some classical, just a little bit of everything. Nature, you know, had a big influence on my music as well. Steel pan artists like yourself, like Garvin Blake, Andy Akiho, uh, Jonathan Scales, you know, Andre White. When you guys approach the steel pan instrument in the art form, what comes out is usually something that's different, you know, outside of the expected norm and uh, what people would say, well, pan can play this. You guys take the instrument to another level in each in your own unique way. What about pan that inspires you, you think, to go to push those musical boundaries? I think it's the fact that people doubt the capabilities of the steel pan, and I've I've gotten that a lot growing up. Um, you know, they thought that we only played calypso and, and reggae. You know, and meanwhile, years before I was even born, Desperados was up here playing classical music. You know, mm -hmm. so and they had Fred Atwell and Hannah Moss. Exactly, so like, and yeah. it, these all these people and all these bands have played classical music and all types of music for years. And classical music is great on pan. But there's so many other possibilities, and the way technology is, the way music is evolving, the possibilities are just becoming more and more. So how was your own music being received? Because as an arranger, as a composer, as a performing artist, um, and with your own ideas, well, with I, that mindset. <laughs> I, I, um, I studied classical music for a while, um, and that was my base. I didn't really do too much of the studying of jazz. Um, a lot of people went that route. And there, it was it was nice. I, I I learned about it. You know, I did take classes and stuff. But I, I was more pushed in the classical realm, and, and I like that too. And so what I tried to do was bring a little Caribbean flavor and um, a little of my own touch to classical and contemporary classical music. But it's interesting you say that you brought a touch of the Caribbean music because when we listen to what we hear from you, for what's being performed by like Crossfire and mm -hmm. when NYU performs your arrangements, there's always a different element. It's not strictly soca, mm -hmm. strictly calypso. There's a bit of funk, there's a bit, a mm -hmm. bit of rock. Uh, at Crossfire, Steel Orchestra's um, 
differentology mm -hmm. um, interpretation. Of course, your musical vision, your arrangement. <laughs> There's a bit of rock there, yeah. especially <laughs> if you're on the drums. I mean, what is it that you're thinking about when you're putting, you know, some of your works together? Mm -hmm. Since you seemingly you're not really shackled by okay, it's got to be calypso, and the whole thing is calypso. You're completely off that tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I try my best to just break break the rules a little bit. <laughs> yeah, break, break some boundaries. <laughs> sounds great indeed. <laughs> right. Okay. This past December, the ACO, which is the American Composers Orchestra, announced mm -hmm. that you would be the orchestra's um, Van Leer Emerging Composer mm -hmm. Fellow for the 2013-2014 season. Mm -hmm. Talk about what this is, how it came together, what is expected of you, and what you hope to gain when you complete that program. Um, well, how it came to me is that my private composition professor at NYU, he said that um, that a uh, guy that he knew that was affiliated with ACO was just looking for a new composer for the year. Every year they do this and they try to bring in new people you know, every year and that can add some different flavor. They always try to up their game, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and he said that he wanted to recommend me. So I was like, well, sure. And as he started to tell me more about it, he said that you know they they, they take you under their wing. Um, they try to make you more of a professional composer and a professional musician. So they put you in a lot of those um, settings of, of, of real world, yeah. um, real life you know, like situations. Like an internship. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. Okay. So um, where we, we have to do things, or I have to do things like um, like write grants and, um, and, and learn how to write grants. So you're running the whole gamut of what would be the experience of the life of a professional musician exactly. before you actually step into it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So it, it, it's been a great experience so far. You know, I have a couple months left. Um, but yeah, it's been great. I've got to do a little bit of everything. I get to learn. And that's the most important thing, learning. You can't yeah. stop doing that. Let's go back briefly to uh, NYU Steel Ensemble mm -hmm. and your work. Your arrangement for the 2013 Panorama with Crossfire Steel Orchestra, you brought that to life again, mm -hmm. this time with amalgamations of stateside Crossfire Steel Orchestra members mm -hmm. and the NYU Steel Ensemble at the Frederick Laws Hall mm -hmm. uh, just a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. So talk about how that came together because it's interesting. It was a full 10-minute panorama piece, mm -hmm. your vision. You changed a couple of things here and then it was really <laughs> cool. But usually... Um, it's an interesting experience for people to play by rote mm -hmm. if you're accustomed to being just a, a, a steel pan player from the Caribbean, it comes naturally to you. Mm -hmm. However, what we observed was that the NYU Steel Ensemble mm -hmm. played your entire 10 minute mm -hmm. piece without music. How yeah. was that for them? Because that your music <laughs> was complex. This wasn't just, we'll repeat what we hear. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that, how it came together. Well, and how they responded? It took a lot of work from okay. on their part. It did. It, it definitely <laughs> did. It took a little bit of planning. Um, Josh and I just thought it would be really cool. Josh Cullen, the director yes. of the NYU Steel Ensemble. Yes, okay. he thought it would be really cool. Um, he wanted them to get the panorama experience. Most of them don't have the panorama experience. Most of them are playing pan for the first time. You should on stage. They came to live. It was yes. like they were on they stage. They loved it. They loved yeah, it. And okay. at times, I, I was I told Crossfire, I was like, listen, don't don't you know, don't let them um, don't, don't sleep on them. <laughs> yes, they're you know, they're, they're gonna come and they're gonna perform. They're gonna enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And and in rehearsals, it showed. I mean, and we we rehearsed that day for maybe an hour or so, and it was it was, it was great. amazing. <laughs> wow. I mean, just seeing them just go through that entirely, it was an interesting sight, I mm -hmm. have to say. Yeah, and yeah. I just, I love that they enjoyed it. <laughs> that, that was my mode, that was, that was my enjoyment, <laughs> just okay. seeing them enjoy it. And the changes you had in your original arrangement, talk about that just briefly. Um, it was mostly NYU. Oh, I, I okay. I actually gave them free reigns to... To, to feel it how they feel it mm -hmm. and don't feel it the way we feel it Not you know that, yeah. I wanted them so to kind of make it their flavor. own yeah yes. they did because mm -hmm. yeah. there were some interesting fun parts yeah so I purposely was. didn't drum you know <laughs> I didn't was I, he, he was, was he was What's he was um was it Sean Sean yes okay. Sean Perham I believe his last name he was good because it was the transitions from you know soca to a bit of funk a little bit mm -hmm. of rock it was really nice yeah I loved it I did not want to drum did not want to take that away you just still were on stage enjoying yourself anyway yeah I had yeah, to <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had to I had to enjoy the music with them you, know? you did yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the pictures prove it <laughs> um, and what about the experience across fire steel orchestra 
they it was a different experience for them yeah. they loved it they okay. were excited about it and they had a lot of fun they they loved just being there with nyu nyu was very receptive to them coming in um if you saw on stage we we mixed the band up yes. so you know there was the crossfire were, in yeah. between everybody mm -hmm. and i think that worked out really well it for did. them mm -hmm. yeah. it was an experience just for everybody so. Now there's another milestone in your musical career path that's coming up, which is mid-September this year, 2014, you're mm -hmm. going into Princeton University um, to begin studying for your doctoral in musical composition. Mm -hmm. Talk about your feelings for this next step in your oh, life. There's a whole <laughs> lot of nerves right now, a whole lot of nerves. Mm -hmm. Stepping into NYU, I was nervous, but I, I think I was a little bit more ready for that fight. Princeton, I have no idea what to expect. I'm, I'm excited, I'm very excited, and I'm very nervous. Now, you are also a drummer, in addition to being an arranger, a composer, mm -hmm. and you know, you get in there with the band, I mean, to begin with, at the onset, you're there, you're in front of the band, you're making sure you get what you want, people looking at you, they're vibing off you, and then you get into the drummer seat. Talk about the difference in these two pockets within an orchestra, if you will. Standing in front is out of my element. <laughs> <laughs> Standing in front is, is very out of my element. Um, I do it because I have to. I need to teach. They need to learn from me. I need to learn from them. And it it's commanding your music. It's bringing out what you want in your music. And being able to drum to that is just accentuating. Um, and just putting your own little feel to exactly what you're doing. Not everybody can do it and feel it the way that you feel it. Yeah. You know, and feeling your music. And sometimes you're it's the hard. Pulse of that yeah. Time. yeah. And it's hard to bring in a, a drummer sometimes and, and then have just say feel, feel it. and interpret exactly mm -hmm. what you want to hear. Exactly. So you kind of have like a leg up in that case. People like yourself, Leon Foster, mm -hmm. Thomas Yola, the drummers as well. And you essentially take the stage for Panorama. Yeah. That's when you really wanted to come together. Mm -hmm. And it's it's good and bad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it is good and bad to be to be drumming. Because sometimes I also like people to just come in and feel it the way you feel it. Yeah. So, okay. And that's what I did with NYU. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Sean Perham. Pick up the sticks there. Yeah. Okay, um, of course, in addition to being a ranger, drummer, um, composer, you're also a player yourself, a performing mm -hmm. artist. Do you miss that in terms of being behind the pan yourself? Mm -hmm. And also, which, if any, of the instruments, the voices of instruments in the steel pan family happens to be your favorite, if you have one? The quads, quadrophonics, oh, yes. Okay. Why? <laughs> um, because it, it hides me. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about being shy to get a degree. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is my honest opinion. It, it's challenging and it's fun to play, but it also hides my face. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> yes. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> but I, I do miss playing very much. I miss learning music. And anytime I hear the players complaining that, oh, this is hard, or, you know, I didn't catch it fast enough, I'm like, you know, that's, I want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> do you play any other instrument? Uh, no, just pan and trying my best at drums at times. You do quite well in drums. <laughs> Dang. Okay. I've learned a little bit of marimba, um, okay. and I've had to practice that. And I would say that's a very lovely instrument. Mm -hmm. That the tone and quality of the instrument is beautiful. In regards to your work with ACO, um, you arranging as well for the orchestra? Um, yes and no. Okay. So I write pieces that um, the, the the director mm -hmm. he he gives me advice on. Mm -hmm. um, he tells me things um, that that I can fix, I can do better, um, things that may work well with the orchestra or may not work well. Um, the conductor as well, he makes notes, he'll say, well, okay, you know, this may be easy for me to read or understand or interpret, stuff like that. So it, it, it's really like a hands-on feel. And what do they think about the steel pan itself as an instrument? Well, that is also something interesting because the director actually came from Oberlin. And apparently he was there when they started the steel okay. pan, so he's very familiar with okay. um, with pan. The orchestra, on the other hand, is not so familiar, mm -hmm. and so when it comes to music for them, it's strictly orchestra music, no pan. No pan. Yeah. Okay. Your cousin Keon DeLas, mm -hmm. you guys are on similar musical yes. trajectories. <laughs> yes, we are. You know, he's a composer, he's a performer, he's mm -hmm. an arranger. What's it like to have a cousin who is in such a similar 
uh, musical path as yourself? How do you guys, you know, connect and stuff like that? It it's fun, you know. It's it's yeah. it's, cha it's equally challenging. It's it's hey, I finished this piece. Do you want to hear it? Do you want to listen to it? You know. <laughs> and then when we do hear it, it's like, oh, I see what you did here. I, I like how you did this. You know, it's a critique and it, it's it's constructive, you know, criticism. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's great. It, it helps. And I don't take offense to you know anything, and yeah. I, I don't believe he does either. So yeah. it, it's it's equally good. Okay, where do you see yourself in ten years from now, Chris? Life <laughs> and music is changing. Um, to be honest, I, I didn't actually see myself here in this position now. So architecture might have been something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and even Princeton was you know a bit of a shock. Um, How so, did that come together? If you're thinking it's a bit of a shock. <laughs> um, Princeton, I we actually decided on Princeton pretty late, okay. and I had about a month to prepare material for okay. Princeton, and. I, nobody knew about Princeton. Not even my parents knew. Ah. <laughs> I was I, I applied, and then when I found out, it was just like a shock to everybody, you know, except for like a few people who had to know. <laughs> so, ten years, I I hope to be teaching and pushing the art form of Pan and um, giving more opportunities to emerging composers for Pan specifically, and and Pan and other instruments like pan and trumpet, pan and marimba, pan and violin, mm. those kinds of things. Okay. Um, I want to I want to give opportunities to other people to be able to do that and have people perform their works. Okay. Um, young emerging arrangers like yourself, um, Andre White, Odie Franklin, Mark Brooks, uh, Devon Stewart, you know, Leon Foster Thomas, you guys are changing the panorama landscape, listening to the works that emerge from your mind as interpreted by steel orchestras is always it's also something unique, like, wow. Mm -hmm. um, y you know, you all are essentially pushing away the expected norm for panorama. What do you think about the work that you guys have been doing and, you know, are you satisfied to a certain extent with the, the state of pan in panorama? and the panorama arrangements today? A little satisfied, <laughs> a little. I think there's still definitely room for improvement. Yeah, what changes would you like to implement if you were given the chance then? The judging? Okay. As, as always. It seems to be a general uh, challenge. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the judging right now is one of the biggest things. Um, and really, with panorama, I don't believe anyone is actually clear on what can and cannot be done. Yeah. And Even though there are, there's a body of rules, you still have to show up. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so some of us, we try and we just try to do different things and just break boundaries and sometimes we just completely fail. And others decide they want to break a few. But from, but from whose perspective? From the judge's perspective, okay. yes. not Definitely not from our perspective, yeah. you know, because we're, we're, yeah, we're trying to change panorama, we're trying to change, you know, music and and, and give people an idea of what our generation is like and not be stuck in Bradley's generation and Bugsy's generation, which was great, you know, of course, it's always great and it's it's always great to reference, but now we're new and there's younger ones coming up before, you know, before us and, and they're listening to us, they're listening to yeah. our music, you know, so we have to give them something to look forward to. Set and some sort of an example. Exactly, yeah. and, and, and set a standard I that they it. can now break. Mm -hmm. What is Panorama, therefore, to you? Time to just free up. Hey. Have fun, <laughs> you know? That, that, that is the most important yeah. thing, is just having fun, freeing up. It's not even the competition. Yeah. I, I like to hear what everybody's doing. Just last night, I listened to every single band from Panorama last year in New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. Mm. So, before we wrap up, mm. are there any burning issues pan related that you'd like to you know talk about you know anything that you think really needs to be given voice to um pan, pan or panorama it, it's not you know mm. there's nothing that's restricted here the discipline is very different now than it was growing up in panorama um or in pan. panorama and pan in general okay. and being able to dedicate time to a, a state side is is becoming very difficult. I, I, I believe a lot more the, the youth and the younger generation has so many things going on that trying to dedicate time for Pan sometimes seems very difficult. 
um, not so difficult for some, and others just kind of push it to the side. And in some ways, I see that it could potentially hurt Pan. What would you like to see in the New York Pan landscape? More unity amongst bands. I think a lot of bands um, seem to either fight each other down or um, it's all for themselves. And I think there's so much out there that we can spread and share with each other and, and we don't. And elevate the art form itself. Exactly. And, and it is I, a I think business that's, as well. That it aspect, is. Yeah. And but as, as far as I've seen, there's a lot to go around. And <laughs> there's, there's, I would probably say there's even more than enough to go around as the more that I, I, I learn and I see the business that's out there. But a lot of people don't seem to see it, you know, see it the same way. So it's very close. Right well, Kendall, thank you very, very much. I mean, it's been marvelous to be able to actually sit down and speak with you. I get a sense of where you've come from, where you are, mm -hmm. where you're going. I mean, to share that with the Global Steve Pan community, it's a really good thing. So thank you very much thank for sitting you. down, talking to Wayne Steel Talks. And all the best, onward, forward, upward, <laughs> anything else is elevating both to yourself and, of course, of the other ages. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. When Steel Talks, everybody listens.